Well, joining me live is Kelly Slesson, AI expert and e-commerce coach. How are you? Nice to see you. I'm good. Nice to be here. So we've been talking about this for years. You've been an AI expert for 10 years. And um, what's your thought? Are we in for human extinction? Well, I think there's more challenges in the human race than AI. Um, and yes, there are some real dangers around AI that we need to get our heads around quite quickly. But I think humans are more likely to, are the biggest threat to human life. Mm -hmm. It's not AI. And, and making sure that we are educated and use it in the right way um, and that we have rules and regulations around it is going to reduce that that possibility. Okay, yeah, the campaign for safety AI was saying they need to exercise extreme caution, pause the developing, de development of capabilities, um, controllability and safety and activate existing power structures. So I guess, yeah, exactly what you're saying there, um, if it's in the right hands. Yeah, you mm. can't you can't stop this. Mm. Like the, 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 It's already started. You can't put it back in the box. You can't delay it. The challenge we face is that if you look at the AI global um, index, you know, we look at kind of the rankings, US is number one. So with 100 points, they're number one. China's at 62, UK's at 42, Australia's at 31. If we decide, if any country or any, you know, um, organisation decides to take a step back and wait, everybody else in the world is still moving on. Yeah, it's fascinating, isn't mm. it? I know you educate a lot of people in this space. How important is education and, you know, for potential jobs. Yeah. So I think education is, is, is important. It's so important from a number of lenses. And if you look at that Roy Morgan report, they talked about the fear. Again, Australia's got the number one fear in the world, again, of AI. And But if you look at that Roy Morgan report, it talks about females having the biggest fear. It talks about the ageing population having the biggest fears. And they're really the underrepresented groups in technology and artificial intelligence. So what we need to do is educate those groups so that we have bigger diversity within technology so that we're making decisions from a place of unbias and that when we grow the technology, we're growing it based on the thoughts and feelings and, you know, all of the knowledge of females and the ageing population and the younger generation, that all of us come together to help really build this journey out. There's fear of a lot of job losses, which mm. is understandable, and it does look like there will be millions of jobs yeah. lost, but on the flip side, there will be other jobs available. And again, what you're saying, like in a different way, and we need to educate ourselves in that, in that yeah. process. So there, there's, there was something I read the other day, it said 300 million jobs globally will go, you know? And, and the reality is they will, but the people that will keep their jobs and thrive in this environment, if those that use AI met paired with their roles. So we need humans and we need AI as well. And put those two together, we're in a much better position. We hear that AI cannot replace human connection and it can't think outside the box. Mm. Do you agree with those statements? Yeah, I, it can't replace. I mean, if you think about the conversations you have with your coffee shop, the person in the coffee shop, you go to your doctor's reception, the doctor's receptionist that uses AI to make the process easier so that when you walk in, you're not waiting, they've already got your information, you know, they've got some background and history about you that they can use to make qualified, quick decisions, but you still get that human connection. That's the person that's going to win in this space. So do you see, perhaps on the flip side, events, um, experiences such as musical theatre, concerts, being here on TV, mm. <laughs> let's not mm. lose our job. Um, do you know what I mean? Like seeing those sorts of things where we do have that human connection experience perhaps, you know, getting even more popular. I think human connection become more and more important as we start to systemise, operationalise and, and build processes with AI, that human connection piece. And I'm seeing it with, there's a retailer I'm working with at the moment who is a uh, grassroots front of house. She runs retail stores. She's got a crystal business. She's an older lady. She, you know, technology isn't her thing. She's learnt how to use AI to her advantage. And she now works on the connection she has with her customers while AI does a lot of her content work mm. and it does a lot of the processing of orders and things like that. So we're seeing that human connection being more and more important in business growth. And I guess many people listening now were fearful of when we had online platforms and all this scary internet. Mm. It's not that hard to, you know, Google and so forth. Um, is it a similar situation? It seems to be going leaps ahead compared to 
when we had online platforms? The growth of this is 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 insane. So if I think back to uh, mobile and, and the growth of that and we compare it, we had 100 million users within three months of ChatGPT being online and it has continued to grow. Interestingly, though, only 18% of the US are actually using it on a regular basis. So although we've had this massive growth, there's still a small minority of people using it. If you compare it to mobile and tablets, we've not seen this growth in any other technology in any other platform. So the adoption rate, because it is easily, easily accessible, um, because it is free, um, the adoption rate is, is going very, very quickly. So tell us more about what you do in your work. And again, you've been an AI expert for, for 20, 10 years, sorry. Mm. Mm. So I work with retailers um, and I help them grow their e-commerce um, stores. And I use AI a lot to do the, the really kind of grunt work, the content production, the um, website content. Um, we use it for email marketing. And basically what we do is we use it to save them time in the areas of their business that actually takes them away from being that front of um, that human connection. So we use it on those tasks that they, a lot of them weren't doing before or weren't doing well. And we use it to really help grow their online revenue. What about in the creative world? I mean, of course, we're seeing what's happening overseas with the mm. strike, with the actors' strike. They're concerned about AI taking over their scripts and their content. Uh, we're seeing the music industry and, uh, you know, songs without the original artist's consent being used. A lot of people in that creative world are, are quite concerned. Mm. So so in the US, I know there's um, the, the government are now opening up a, a forum for people to talk about and give their views on copywriting. So how we copyright things like scripts, how we copyright pr um, content that's been produced by AI. And again, you know, I think in this country as well, we need to have this kind of body that is diverse, that has lots of different opinions, um, that come from different backgrounds, that can start to feed that information. And, and we as a, as, a, as a group decide on what copyright should look like going forward and how we need to manage that and then build the regulations and processes around that. So you feel quite confident that we won't become extinct? I don't think AI is going to have that impact on us. I think there are a lot of things, um, you know, we need to get some regula regulation in place pretty quickly. All right, great to see you. Thank you so you much. Too. And happy Father's Day to your husband. Yeah, thank you. What thank are you, you up to? He's, he's home writing his book. He's, oh. he's got a fear of AI oh, because has he? he's a writer. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So he's, he's probably, I drive him mad with my AI stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so you haven't convinced him that it's going to be okay. He's using it. Yeah. He's using oh, it. Yeah. yeah. What yeah. about that with schools and you know um, writing assignments and and books and so forth? Yeah. Look, my kids are using it. I think the mm. best thing we can do again for group is is education. Yeah. So yes, we need to get them to use their own brain and, and, and encourage them to do things creatively. But these are the tools of their future. If we don't get them to use them now, again, we are we as an organisation, as a country, as a business, whatever it might be, as a family, are going to get left behind. All right, great to see you. We've got to go. You Thanks too. so much. Thanks.